Okay, everybody. So we have 500 milliliters of epoxy mixed up. Um, this is ClearCast 7000. I did 250 of the hardener and then added in another 250 of the um, resin. Mixed it for uh, four minutes, scraping the sides and bottom real well, and then um, let it sit for five minutes to let the bubbles rise up as much as I could. So let's get in here now with our straw, favorite sipping utensil. And I'm going to blow gently on the surface and hopefully you'll be able to see all these little bubbles pop because that's pretty cool. Just like that. That was pretty neat. <laughs> um, I try to stir in a way where bubbles and things won't get added to it. You can see I've got one little fleck of something floating in there. Um, but I'll deal with that as we get there. And now I have a few projects here on the table. The first one that I'm going to be doing, and the way that I set up my projects is I have the cup I'm going to be using to mix it in, the die I want to use, the mold I'm using, and a like tongue depressor, craft stick, um, all set up and ready to go. So this way I can use this as my master pot, um, and I don't want to contaminate this at all with any of the colors or pigments that I'm going to be using. Um, so I'm just going to pour, no, nah, that should be, bloop, that should be plenty. I'm just guessing here. Sweep the edge, set that off to the side so I don't like put myself in it. And I'm going to be using some alcohol ink. This is a Ranger alcohol ink. Um, just unscrew in the top. I really like these because they have a nice dropper applicator. Oh, and I love the way the alcohol ink spreads. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now what I'm making here are some little rupees in this mold. There'll be links to all the different tools and materials that I'm using down below. But um, I'm making some rupees for Randy for his geeky grab bags that he does on his Patreon. Um, I wanted to make something special for him, and uh, he's like, will you make me some blue rupees? So I was like, yeah, I'll do that. So just mixing quite thoroughly. This is a really nice, just simple, straightforward project. No additives or anything like that, but I am going to be painting the backside with a very metallic, like, chrome finish. You can see that's a nice dark cobalt blue. I think that'll show up nicely. But uh, putting something very metallic on the back, I think, will help <clears throat> really show off that nice color. Hey, Randy, do you want to come look at this and check the blue for me? I really like it. Mm -hmm. You think that's bold enough? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So I'm just wiping the excess off the side. And then I like these little cups because you can kind of squeeze a bit and make not quite a spout, but pretty close. Let me adjust the camera for you guys. There we are. And I'm just going to pour in a bit. I feel like I only really need to do the molds at like halfway at first. Um, you don't need to use a ton of product to make these. And it seems like I've mixed, mixed myself a good bit more actually than what I needed. So let me fill that up just a little bit more. So maybe two-thirds of the way, full in the mold. There we go. And now this is why I do like to have extra on molds on hand, because now I can come over and I'm going to put some of this really nice blue um, into these faceted gems. Now, I have a pot time of about 
45 minutes. So I don't want to hurry, but I don't want to lollygag either. So being real careful to not overfill my molds. I think the cat's meowing at birds outside. I don't know if you guys can hear, but that's adorable. Okay, also I want to make sure that my mold is level-ish. Also notice I'm dripping all over the place. Um, I have some really nice uh, just brown paper down on my work surface. That way cleanup should be easy. Randy, which cat is that? They are just singing. And you'll be able to tell, at least with the clear cast, um, it really starts to heat up uh, before it's pot time, like by the end of it's pot time. And uh, what I mean by that, pot time is how long you can work with it. Um, add additives, mix it, pour it, that kind of stuff. Usually after, it, it'll say on the bottle or the manufacturer's website, um, if you feel like you're really pushing it. Um, it's a, I don't, I don't know, it's a good idea to just have some molds on hand so you can pour it into something where you won't feel like you've wasted it. But, um, or you could set a timer too for, uh, you know, be like, okay, Google, let me know whenever, you know, 35 minutes is up. So I know I've got 10 minutes to make it quick. <laughs> Man, this really made a lot more than I needed. So now I've got these little gems here. And I'm just going to pour gently. Our next project on the table is using Cast and Craft Transparent Resin Dye. Um, another clean cup, another clean craft stick, um, a freshly cleaned mold, and more of our mixed uh, resin. And so I'm going to pour about as much as I did last time, about a third of this little Dixie cup. Which really, I guess I could be keeping track. It looked like to be about uh, 75 milliliters or so. And honestly, and I'm not really good yet at gauging um, how much resin I'm going to need for a project. Uh, <laughs> that's becoming more and more apparent to me. Um, I'm going to put in about I want this to be really dense. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Ugh, just about that much. <laughs> Maybe a quarter teaspoon um, of the resin dye, because I want this to be really boldly pigmented. So, just mixing it in. Now, unlike the alcohol ink, this resin dye has like a very strong smell. Whereas the alcohol ink, as far as I could tell, did not have an aroma. And I'm just stirring thoroughly. I'm trying to not incorporate too many bubbles, but I kind of like, sometimes I like a messy resin look. It's a really deep, like, wine red. Then also we can go through and uh, blow on the backs of the cast pieces as they, before they dry, or start setting up. And, um... <clears throat> excuse me, and get those bubbles to pop. So like, doesn't hurt to go through, pop them while we can. Okay, so I'm going to start up here, and just pour. Again, I want the molds about two-thirds of the way full. And I feel like doing really simple single color casts like this is a great way for me to be building up my um, eye cup coordination. You know, just getting a feel for the project. Because everything that I'm doing now I hope will transfer over into future resin projects. Pouring it in. I 
feeling pretty good about that. This might be my last one that I can get out of this cup. Looks like I might be able to get very little bit of one more. And I kind of feel like with wanting to make like keychains and different things out of um, these hearts, putting in just a bit more. Um, <clears throat> I want them to be a little bit thicker. I don't want thin, flimsy resin pieces. So I put a little bit more in to the cup, a little bit more resin, a little bit more resin dye, a little bolder this time. Just winging it, just seeing what happens. And I want to stir pretty thoroughly. This is maybe my third or fourth resin project. There we are. Blowing those bubbles out. And so I still really feel like I'm just beginning to get the hang of uh, some of these techniques. Definitely getting a hang for start trying to gauge Pouring one color of resin into another. It's quite fun. <laughs> a little bit of swirly action going on here. Okay, so there's that one. And now what I'm going to do is I have this lid to a banker box. And it's sitting just right next to me. And I'm going to lift this very carefully. And I am going to... Uh, set this in the lid of the banker box, like so. And that's really interesting. I'm starting to get a little bit of, like, foamy froth. Let's see if that blows off. Yep, those air bubbles are really releasing. And you can see on some of these, you don't really want to displace the uh, resin. Like, uh, I'm going to give you an example of too much displacement. You don't want to risk that too much. You can actually start to incorporate more air bubbles than you're getting rid of. Just a nice, gentle... Slow breath. Okay, so now I'm going to set this off to the side for now, and we can go ahead and get started on our next pour, which is going to be a little bit more complicated. I am going to have three separate containers. I'm going to do... about an inch deep in this cup, this cup, and there's a dog hair in it. I did not check for that. And this cup. And one of the cups I'm going to just be leaving clear. And then the other two cups I'm going to be adding additives. So I have three separate mixed stirring sticks. I'm just going to sweep that piece of dog fur right up out of our resin. Thank you. Looks like a Sam hair. <laughs> it's all the time it takes. But one of these I'm going to be putting in a violet toned India ink. And I have a dropper for this one. And I want it to be just a little translucent still. And uh, you can rinse out and reuse these droppers. Be sure to rinse it out while your pigment is still wet. But uh, I just reuse the same dropper with the same ink. 
so there we have that. On this one, I'm going to be using, this is some turquoise diamond effect makeup powder pigment by, B, by CCS. You can see that's beautiful. And I'm just taking a pretty hearty scoop of it and putting that right down into our resin. I'm closing it. So I'm going to start with mixing our purple together. And this makes a really nice, almost opaque um, purple. Just stirring it all together. until I feel really happy with that color distribution. And then I'm gonna come in here with the turquoise diamond makeup pigment, makeup powder, sorry. And with this one, I really probably should have sifted it. Oh, future Vaughn, I hope you know better. <laughs> Please learn from my mistakes. But So let's try to get that nice and smooth. We can kind of smush it up against the wall, almost like getting the chunks out of a pancake batter. batter. But this looks really nice. Like, I love that color so much. Okay. So now whenever you feel pretty good about the pigment distribution in that one. I'm going to wipe as much as we can off the sides. Again, wipe as much as we can off the sides. And I'm going to start with just a little bit from each cup. Because I don't want to overdo it. And just a little swirl. Nope, oh, off camera. Okay, you can see I've got a little swirl. And then we're going to have a little swirl. And now we're going to come in with our mixing stick and just kind of swirl. I don't really want to be mixing at all. Like, not thorough, no thorough color distribution. Nothing like that. And so now I'm going to take, this is a Tiny Windows silicone resin mold. And I'm going to be just pouring into this mold. I store all of my molds for, uh, like, top side down, face down, I guess is a way to put it. Um... Just I feel like I'm less likely to get problems with uh, <clears throat> dust or hair settling into it out of the air. Oops. I'm hesitant to waste any, but sometimes it's just unavoidable. And I'm just filling up all of these little molds that I can. Set that back off to the side, and I'm going to t going to continue mixing up batches of this mixed resin like that, um, and then pouring them into basically every single mold that I have, uh, and then I'll meet y'all right back here so that we can see how they turn out. So here we have our resin. 
that we poured. It has been a minute, like probably oh day and a half. So, and I did have some dust and stuff settling on these. Uh, just I'm working on my setup, but let's see how they unmold. This is the ooh, this is the tiny windows mold, and look at how well that just popped so easily right out of there. Not quite as translucent as I wanted it to be. Let's check out this one. This is the one where it started off with the blue ooh, alcohol ink. And I still feel like next time I'm definitely going to have to do the front of it with clear resin. I'm going to just have to pour clear on all of them. I think that'll be a good uh, tech habit to get into because I would have loved for this to have been reversed a little bit. Let's pop out. Oh, this one looks really nice. And I, I'm worried that all of them will be super dark on the front, but that's okay. Yeah, all that stuff kind of settled a bit. That'll be all right, though. Let's pop out some of these smaller ones. See how they did. Ooh, I like that. Now, this is very deep. These smaller ones are surprisingly deep. Now, also, I feel like I might have been able to make some little acrylic Pokeballs if I had filled it just a little bit more, and then I could have put them end to end. That's a really neat idea. Let's see how these tiniest ones, ooh, look at that, how those came out, just nice and small. Okay, I'm not going to unmold everything um, in this video. Not, not on camera at least, but I'll show y'all everything once it's done. And I have some soapy water here to use with these crystal molds. And you can see I just push up on the bottom and down on the sides. And that just separates it right out, in theory. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, not quite translucent. See how they look on some of these other ones. Maybe this one here. That looks pretty cool. If I can get them out of there, uh... there we go. It's providing a little bit of a uh, counter tension. This one looks like it's gonna be really pretty. So I'm I'm learning it actually takes surprisingly little of whatever pigment or medium it is that you want to be adding. For me, at least, less does actually seem to be more in this case. Get a little bit more soapy water in there. And roll it so it gets down between our resin and the mold. Now that's more along the lines of what I was going for. That kind of translucent, just beautiful. Okay, let's see our next tray. <clears throat> a lot of these guys. Let's see how Randy's Rupees came out. Oh wow, that's so nice and pretty. <laughs> really nice blue color. Yeah, I don't regret at all having added that little bit of swirl in the back. I do love that. Let's see how these guys turned out. Yep, still a little heavy on the front. I'm learning. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, all of that seemed to just settle. Meh. It happens, I guess. Let's see how these ones did. I love how easily, ooh, they just pop right out of their molds. Now, I did have a heater going in this room, and, um, oh, wow. They seemed to uh, set up really nicely. Another little faceted... Oh, I really like that. Now over here on this one. Ooh, I kind of like that matte finish too, though. And apparently that will buff and polish up, so I think this one's going to be really pretty. Let's see how these crystals came out. If we can. There we go. Yeah, I just get a little bit separated. Dip it into some of that soapy water. Kind of just roll it around to distribute that because that water will get in there and really help things along. I'm 
or at least in theory. And I don't want to, I hesitate to use my fingernails very much because I really don't want to um, harm the mold in any way. There we go, pushing out the tip first. And there's still a nice deep cavern here that oh, I could put in a backing color if I wanted, but I think I'm just going to leave it like this. I'm going to sand down the back. And then uh, I really love that color. So pretty. One of these freestanding molds. Just popping it out. Oh, well, that's a cute little thing. Okay, next tray. And this is our last tray. Let's see how these hearts came out. Yeah, mixing by volume made a big difference. And I know that's the simplest following the instructions, but that's easier said than done for me most of the time. So that one came out very light colored. Yeah, this is more the color I go for. I love that deep, deep red as opposed to more of a pink. But I'm going to back these with a nice metallic um, nail polish. And that way it'll give them a really nice shine. I don't know, I may leave some of them just straight translucent. Some of these will be going into Randy's Craft Kate crates as well, because they're very much like the uh, the, the hearts from the Legend of Zelda video games. <laughs> like the little life hearts. Let me see, that's just the heat of my hands fogging them up. I think it came out really nice. Perfectly smooth. Now this one, this is a mold I haven't used before. Let's see how these guys unmold. Oh my gosh, so much detail. Oh, I'm really pleased with that. Oh, that's super cute. Oh, look at the little starfish, y'all. And really lightweight stuff, too, that make really cute earrings, I think. Now, these ones I'm pretty excited about because I feel like that I got, I finally nailed that proportion of, oh, of resin that I was looking for keep it kind of nice and translucent yep oh that these these ones are my favorites I do think they're just really nice little specimens it makes me very happy <laughs> oh that purple oh yeah <laughs> Okay, now for this one, I was really excited about this one. I love that kind of shape of things. Beautiful. A little puzzle piece. And I love these flexible silicone molds because even with all of those little corners and things, it just unpops nice and easy. There we go. Pretty pleased, you guys. Right on. So, there we are. So, here we are. These are just some of them. A little bit dusty from the box that I put them in. But, uh, I'm really liking the way that they came out. Hey y'all, thanks so much for joining me for this tutorial. Um, well, it's not really a tutorial so much as a um, documentation, documentation, I don't know. Um, it just capturing the process that I went through to get these results. Um, a big reason of why I'm doing this is so that future Vaughn can come back and look and be like, that's what I did and decide whether or not I want to try to emulate that or replicate it. But I did want to show you guys, this is what I did with my leftover resin. To be able to reuse this container, I turned it upside down on some wax paper, and ouch, oh I just hit my elbow, and I'm actually able to just pull it all out from the inside of this cup. So now I can reuse this again in the future, and the reason I did that is you don't want a buildup of resin there in the bottom because any measurements will be off. 
let's set that opening down on a shelf so that's pretty cool <laughs> and then that same wax paper this is what's left there with some that pour and it just peels right off and I was wondering ooh, if I could get like a cool effect with the light coming through it there's some whole <laughs> little holes in it like pinprick holes from where the uh, bubbles popped but I don't know I just thought it'd be neat to like do something with it you know so um, I think I might save this because it's very lightweight, but I'm wondering at the prospect of doing poured fairy wings. If we had little sections like this and, um, and then suspended them in the frame because this is, I mean, super lightweight. And I think next time I'm going to try to turn the camera so that you can, you can see the, uh, the light go through this. I mean, look at how cool that came out. Let me see if I can get the tripod stable. I mean, I feel like that's really neat. And so next time I'm going to try to get that translucent kind of effect um, throughout all of it. But not bad for a first try. <laughs> I don't know, just kind of neat. And then also, it's a little bit malleable. Oh, I just realized. <laughs> Sorry, I was just sitting here playing with the stars. It, it is a little bit malleable still. So, I might actually, if I can, take it. And I'm just making a little bit of a cone. And I'm just going to twist it and let it sit like this and then I'm actually going to bow and pucker out the sides to make a little bit of a trumpet flower and I think I may start saving up to make myself a whole bouquet of little and if I had multiple petals of this, I could make myself a giant resin rose. Um, and all it would take would be like a little spot just right there. We could always open it up a little bit more, make that a little bit. I mean, there's a lot we could do with this. So that's fun to think about the experimentation and just the realm of possibilities that might come from this. So, but thank you guys again for hanging out with me. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or ideas, uh, be sure to let me know down in the comments below. Um, I'm sure I've already mentioned this, but I will be linking all of the molds and tools and materials that I used in this video down in the video description. So if you're interested in getting similar results to what I did or trying something different based off of what I've done or just like, oh my God, I gotta have that mold. Um, please go check those out. And, uh, I'm actually, I'm really excited to be giving all of these, uh, resin pieces to my patrons in upcoming, uh, months like what is it it's march so this will be april's craft crate that i'm making these for so um and that's they're gonna have resin they're going to have hand painted dragon eyes and like all kinds of stuff as well as like uh wire wrapping and chain mail stuff in the kits as well so if you guys are interested in supporting um, my daily tutorials beyond just liking, sharing, and subscribing, please consider joining me over there on Patreon because we have a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, thanks you guys again. So until next time, happy crafting, and I'll see you around. Bye! <laughs>